The Board of Trustees of the People's Democratic Party yesterday met in the Federal Capital Territory of Abuja and has taken a swipe at the all-progressive Congress-led federal government over what it called the increasing spate of insecurity in some parts of the country. Now, this is just as the board warned the ruling party not to drive the nation into a one-party state with the manner it's handling the nation's democracy. In a communique issued at the end of its 75th meeting on Friday in Abuja, the board flayed the Tinubu-led government of its management of the economy and the resultant effect. The board also rejected the presidential elections petition's uh, court's judgment, adding that it was monitoring the election petition cases across the country. This morning, we're joined by Daniel Boala. He's a lawyer and member of the People's, uh, People's Democratic Party. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good to have you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we probably should just start with, you know, getting your views and your quick um, assessment on the presidential election petitions tribunal judgment. Um, both cases of the Labour Party, the PDP and the APM were, you know, at this point, you know, I would say were thrown out. Um, there's, of course, uh, the Supreme Court that we're looking forward to, to seeing what that ruling is. But what were your thoughts on that ruling? Well, um, thank you for having me. I made a commitment since when the judgment was delivered, never to make a public comment on that. I turned down, I declined a lot of invites because, quite frankly, I have not read uh, the judgment in full. I'm a little bit busy with research here in, uh, in London. The, the only uh, few places that I have read are uh, areas that relates to the interpretation of the code regarding Section 132 about uh, the requirement for 25% in the FCT. So I can only comment uh, you know, on that point if you want me, but uh, I don't want to comment on the areas I have not read and then appreciate the reasons of their notion. Okay, All we'll right. probably bring you know this again you know, at a later time when you have a um, better understanding. Um, but of course, you yeah. know, the Board of Trustees of the uh, PDP has given, you know, a, a you know, broad assessment of the current APC-led government, and it doesn't seem to be giving them a pass mark. You know, why would you say so? Because there's a lot of people who would argue that the APC has come, you know, with its own idea of change. And, you know, things may need to be a little difficult for a little while for Nigerians um, while they fix the country and make things better. Does the PDP not agree I with that? Yes, that is excuses. Uh, the last eight years wasn't a PDP administration. Uh, it was APC administration, and this is just a continuation. So when they make a point, they should be able to talk about or account of, you know, on uh, the last eight years. And if you have nothing to show as deliverables for the last eight years, asking Nigerians to be patient will amount to misleading or deceiving them. You know, I said the other day that uh, it is said that we campaign in poetry, but we govern in prose, meaning that there will come a time when you have to stop the sexy talks and fantasy talks about we will do this, we will do that. That's when you are campaigning and it's in poetry. But when you govern, you govern in prose, you govern on realities, you govern on deliberate, you govern on high timeline. And the last 100, year, 100 days of this uh, APC administration, it is not just the opposition party, the PDP, that uh, can assess the Nigerian people have been making their assessment. I've listened to virtually every television program to hear the views of the Nigerian people about the last 100 days. And there is a consensus that the last 100 days have been uneventful, no results, no specific direction. And every fabric of our lives and every sector of the economy, there is no impact. You know, when you plan, generally in every of our lives, not just because of political party or government, you used to, you must have short term, mid term, and long term. So, if you talk about mid term and long term, and you're asking the Nigerian people to be patient, that is understood. It, it, it's, it's in planning. But what about the short term? What have you been able to do or show in the short term that the promises of the mid term and the long term you know, are going to be actualized? There's actually nothing in the short term. The only thing the Nigerian people can point at is the 5,000 5, uh, billion which was given to states, which a lot of people believe was more or less like bribery because you gave states for intervention, apart from two, three, four states where it is seen, we have seen in footage of television, their effort to deliver what they call the palliatives, which now has somewhat turned the delivery and the processes into uh, a caricature of a sort because they've turned Nigeria now into 
a refugee camp. When you see the violation of the dignity of the human person in the distribution of this, you know that there is practically no planning. And we haven't gone to even talk about many governors who have not even taken the steps to do anything at all. And we know in Nigeria that if you route your plan through the state government, especially when it relates to, it relates to funding, then you, you, can, you can just go home and say you've just given the, do the governors free lunch because Paris reform, so many other things we can point at that the governors fail to administer. They would have even exercised the decency of their last administration where Professor Yemi Oshiba and came up with a plan of sidelining, not sidelining, but not actually working with the governors for using third parties so you can reach out directly to those affected by uh, the programs you intend to implement. So it is uneventful and it is a worthy criticism that this government has not been able to show direction. They have probably, when you ask for that, I will explain to you what they have been doing is they are pushing propaganda because they feel that when a man is in trouble, anything good news you say to him, will be excited, it raises the hope, even if it will happen or not. And we've seen that in uh, their India and the Bible. Okay, I would like you to, you know, talk about that even further. You've put out a number of tweets reacting to India, Dubai, as well as uh, the Dubai, alleged Dubai visa ban. You've asked the presidency to apologize to Nigerians unless he intended to deliberately mislead Nigerians. Did you foresee that, you know, this was going to be the position? Do you think maybe there is some form of miscommunication that has yet, yet to hit the public? Or do you think this was an actual deliberate attempt to, you know, confuse yes, it's, and it's, mislead Nigerians? It's a letter. It is an actual and deliberate intention uh, of the ruling government to deceive or mislead. I think deceive might be a strong word, but to say mislead Nigerians. You see, because if you look at the statement issued by the media aid to the president, and then you see how, when I called them out, he then began to do a backtracking of some of the things that they said. Up to this moment that I speak with you, the federal government has only tried to explain that what they wrote or what they issued was not what they meant. How can a government not communicate to the people in a truthful language? You see, because truth is one. If you report what happened, there wouldn't be misrepresentation. What the Dubai government issued in their statement was a true reflection of what happened. As a matter of fact, what I didn't say in all of my intervention is that even the ambassador of UAE in Nigeria was contacted by an international news agency and it debunked what the federal government issued. So it is intended to deceive. When you say it's a landmark deal that you got, you say there is a restriction lifted for immediate travel and that Nigeria does not even have to pay the money they owed Emirates. And we said one or two things. Everybody knows that ex that was exactly, that was not what happened. And you did not, in fact, represent what was issued. It is an embarrassment because by the time the media, it blasts the news, all the media outlets, both in Nigeria and outside, reported it. But if you read the report, you will see that their source is just one. And that's why I portion even CNN. I said, next time you should do a better job by fact-checking. It's, it's, it's a basic principle of journalism that when you hear a report from one side and the person said we have agreed with B, then you also find out from B whether that was a true reflection of what was agreed. If you go to India, it was the same thing. You see, they, they pride in photo-ops and handshakes in the hope that they will carry that as a favor to project to the Nigerian people of what they call legitimacy and acceptance and then that the fact that... Um, they are going to make something out of nothing. If you look at what happened in India, it's the same. The president went there four days before the event. In fact, when he arrived in India, the president of India was not even in the country. And, uh, and he evaded the judgment of the court, right? So after four days, he met with businessmen in India. That was the report they gave to us. And that they said they secured a deal of about how many billion? I mean, it is so shameful that you are talking about securing a deal there is no evidence of memorandum of understanding. There is no evidence of any documentation to suggest that. As a matter of fact, the individuals who claim to have reached deals with, none of them has commented in their personal or corporate uh, social media handles, or even to, to, to say that that deal was reported in any local news media in India. So, 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 so we, we feel that you think that pushing out words and playing around with words 
will give the Nigerian people that are despondent a sense of feeling that you are doing something. So you are actually creating emotion, but you are actually not doing anything. That's our assessment of this government. And that is the consensus by even the neutrals, the millennials, and people who are not partisan in politics. Well, some level of jubilation um, across the country uh, when the uh, Dubai uh, suspension was announced. But of course, you know, it turns out that it may not be as factual as, as it was uh, stated. Um, let's move away from there. We may, co may come back here, you know, maybe also come back to the Supreme Court ruling and your expectations. I want to talk about, um, you yeah, know, some weekend now, the FCT minister. Um, I've seen, of course, uh, your reactions, you know, online you know, to the calls for uh, his uh, appointments to maybe be reversed, you know, and, you know, generally um, reaction to him also saying that the um, Atiku Abubakar and a couple of other PDP bigwigs be suspended from the party for their failure to manage the party, amongst other things. Um, I've also seen, you know, people say that the PDP as a party is being slow and being weak by not being able to suspend Yesom Wiki at this uh, point because it's taken too long. Um, what are your thoughts and what are your expectations from the PDP as a party? Um, do you agree with those who say that the party is weak and scared of Nyesom Wike? You see, because I'm a stakeholder, if I say I agree with them, it will be projected as if I am throwing shade at the leadership of the party. But anybody who says the party is weak, I don't think it's far from the truth because uh, what Wike has done uh, could, cannot be tolerated if it were any other person in the party. You saw Wike himself in his state, you saw how brutal he was with members of the party. In fact, if he, Wike had seen you greeting with his political opponent, he would arm it immediately as anti-party and take measures against you. And they do that in every part of Nigeria. As a matter of fact, if you, uh, in the build-up to our, uh, our the election, the presidential election, there were certain suspensions that were given to individuals of the party across this, uh, the nation, or some from AKT State and the rest. And their offenses were not even as grievous <laughs> as that of Wiki. So what, why, why is Wiki treated with Keith blows? That is why, in fact, I believe that Wiki is allowed to grow like a monster in the party. And Wiki is being used by the ruling party to weaken our party so they can see if they can have a one-party state in Nigeria. And I, for one, I don't believe in this life that when you set a standard, certain individuals should be exception to the application of the rules of those standards. Wiki is not what, is project, what he projects himself to be. If you look at Nigeria, because of depression and suffering, anybody who is comedic tends to have the attention of Nigeria because people want to look to comedy and have some form of relief from the pressure and the situation they are confronted. That's the reason why people even listen to Wiki. If you take away his comedic part, there is nothing Wiki has to show. Wiki has not played a part in the development of democracy in Nigeria. It was, there was no time Wiki was engaged in student uh, engagement for freedom. Well, of he, 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 argues, he argues strongly that he, you know, I mean, you, like you've said, he may not have played a role in development of Nigeria, but... He was called, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Projects in River State. So maybe, you know, let's focus on River State. But he also argues strongly that he has played a huge role in keeping the PDP where it is today. And, you know, sure. um, ensuring that the party survived since 2014 and even further. Um, is he wrong, you know, with that claim? So let me make this point clear because I don't belong to a group uh, or a notion that because you finance a party, therefore you become the god of a party, because you would then destroy the whole idea of democracy. Democracy is government of the people, for the people, by the people, not government of one man, because the one man funds the party. Now, Wiki argues about a Mr. Project. You see, uh, people tend to ignore the part of the decent associated with the project. When someone tells you he's Mr. Project, find out how much was voted for the project and how much is involved. So, for example, if you say you build a flyover bridge, uh, you need, people need to find out how, at what cost and then compare the cost whether it is the same with the same cost of the uh, the bridge built by the same Julius Vega in other states. We will not go into details about that. And then whether that the, the flyovers were misplaced priority because what I have learned and I know 
the basics that keep a state. So when I say a state, it's whether a presenting unit or a national state is healthcare, is education, right? And fundamentals of democracy. If you want to rate Wiki on that, it's zero in rivers. Go to rivers and see the hospitals. They are terrible schools in terrible condition. The last time people in civil service were promoted was almost 11 years. But people like the externalities. You put up bridge and then everybody gets excited. But I leave that one by the side. Yeah, talk about people who will always say, but he kept the party. He kept the party. But when we are growing as a democracy, let us not embolden public officers and then push them into certain activities that are inimical to democratic growth. Where did he get the money? What is the source of his money? Before Wike became a governor, Wike did not have a robust legal practice, right? Wike worked in National Union of Road Transport. He worked under Azubike Meregini, and then from there, he ran for local government, you know, right? And then from local government, all of his activities have been a political trajectory. Wike gives out on 200 million to Lagos, a lot of money during his time as governor. No evidence to show if the monies were appropriated by the House of Assembly of the state. So where is the source of funds? And if somebody is financing a political party and you, we don't ask for the source of funding, but then we say because he financed the party, therefore he should be allowed the past to do the things that are inimical to democratic ideals. The question to ask ourselves is, are we ourselves serious? All right. The, the way party is built, I'm coming, the way party is built, party is built as an association of common minds who charge themselves ladies for the purposes of advancing the cause of the party. And when we return to that, then we give the power to the people. But when the people do not give out ladies to have a say in the party, and somebody gives the money, therefore he can do anything and get the pass by the media, passed by the party, passed by everybody, at the end of the day, we will build monsters that will then come and hunt us. All right. Let's talk, let's talk about what point you think that the PDP should have taken a strong stance against um, against Yeso Nwike's activities, right? Uh, should he have been at the commencement of the G5? At what point do you think they should have made a statement? And do you still think that a suspension is likely to come for Yeso Nwike? He has dared anybody to suspend him from the mm. party, saying that he's working for Bola Metinubu and not the APC, so he doesn't really consider his actions, you know, maybe I, I would think that he doesn't consider them anti-party activities. So what are your thoughts on this? First of all, from the beginning, uh, people are bound by the ideals of the party, and the party has a constitution that guides everybody. Then there are rules in that constitution, then there are punishments. If you look at the provisions of the constitution of PDP regarding punishment and offenses, you will find that Wiki has violated at least that I know about three. Taking a decision that is antithetical to the party's objective, uh, making comments that is anti-party, right? engaging in activities that is called anti-party, meaning that activities that run against the ideals of your party. Wike started that right from the beginning, after he lost. You see, Wike does not know how to feel gracefully. After he lost the bid to become presidential candidate of the party, he went basak. And from that day, he never got himself, right? Has broken every rules in the book. It is from that point that Wike should have been given a notice of his violation of the Constitution. If he continued, then they should have given him uh, a suspension, and then he comes defend himself. After that, they can expel him if they do continue. But because we were heading towards the election, people felt we should not be distracted with, uh, you know, yeah, by this uh, unnecessary drama, let's focus on the election. So we now managed him, we got into election. He continued with that nonsensical drama. After election, the party ought to have taken steps. But then we are confronted with petitions in court. And we feel, okay, let us not uh, distract ourselves with that. Let's focus on the uh, uh, let's focus on the case. And him seeing that no steps are taken against him, that's why he continued the rubbish in television, saying he dared people, he dared people. By the time the election judgment was delivered, in my opinion, that was a great time to suspend him. But the, some of the offenses he committed were offenses that called outright expulsion from the party. Now, that has not happened. Do I have hope that the party will do that? Of course, if you belong to a political party, you have hope. Do I believe the party is doing enough to deal with wicked issues? No, I don't think so. And I speak that in my private capacity as a citizen. I don't want to be identified 
with anything that is not viral and strong, right? A political party should engage the governing party on objective and ideals. We should play opposition by looking at their policies, interrogate the policies for the purposes of developing this thing called democracy in Nigeria. But we have not been able to find a seat where we play that effectively because we are distracted by an element who should be grateful to the party rather than being ingrateful or ungrateful and making all kinds of statements that are antithetical to the party. To a point, we are now, this is the point now, to a point where now he even had the audacity to say that it is the, the uh, presidential candidate of the party that should be suspended. That's what happens when you fail to deal with a monster. The minute he grows and develops the tenets and, and, and the qualities of a monster, the next thing is he comes against you. This thing Wike is doing cannot be tolerated by President Bola Metinubu. And I say that because I know President Bola Metinubu. When I was in APC, I was his, his chief spokesman in the primaries. So I know I can tell you a bit about Tinubu. If you do that to Tinubu, your political career will be ended. He doesn't tolerate that. But Wike now is doing that against his party. And nobody wants to talk to him because if you want to talk, some people fear that if you talk, he will say, I gave you this, I gave you these dollars, I did this to you. And it's, it's like a blackmail. They have not been able to talk to him. And then others feel that, well, if you take steps against him, he's going to rattle the party because he brags about having rights to get judgment for people. You see, there are deeper things, even as a collective Nigerians, which we, we should be looking at, so that this nation is not taken over by individuals and they make it a personal property. But democracy to thrive, it is a rule of law where everybody is equal before the law and no is above the law. Seeing as you've mentioned here some wiki and you've mentioned um, his relationship or his working with the president, President Bola Metinumbu. I did also see some tweets where you talked about Nyesom Wiki not being a loyal person and you cited several instances and you also made, you alleged that you can foresee that he is intending to run for president. Do you have any actual information to back this up? Do you genuinely believe yes. that he's intending to run for president? Yes, that is um, Wiki's intention. Even when we uh, in, in, well, in the build up to our election, that was his intention. You see, Wiki is a soul leader. After he lost in that primary, Wiki started lobbying to become the vice presidential candidate to our candidate. But in the media, he would say, God forbid he accepts it. But he was seriously lobbying. When he lost out, then he started crying and then asked that the national chairman be sacked, certain individual be sacked as a condition to work. You know that there were several meetings that they have had even with our candidate. You could not just please him. You see, they allowed the monster to go from the beginning. Now, coming back directly to your question, Wiki's plan, this is it. He wants where he is now to frustrate the party, weaken the party, fight the, the presidential candidate, so that the presidential candidate, if he does not win the case in court, he will walk away. So once that happens, he now takes control of the structures of the party because he believes his Benjamin Franklin can settle people. You know, people love to weaponize poverty in Nigeria. And a lot of people in Nigeria do not have the stamina to withstand the Benjamin Franklin. That even if you give me money, I should be able to look you in the face and say you're wrong if you're wrong. So he weaponized poverty generally everywhere. 99% of people around Wiki, they actually don't love him. But they can't afford to stay away because he probably, you know, takes care of one or two of their needs. So that's the problem. So it comes down to the issue of character. His intention is to frustrate the candidate. By the time the candidate leaves, he takes control of the party. He builds the party according to his likeness and image. And then he will come to the party and run against President Paul Is this for 2027 20, elections? Is this uh, yes, for 2027? Okay. But the problem, but the problem, let me learn. But the problem is that Wiki is in the lion's den. Bola Ahmed Tinubu is one of the fewest politicians in Nigeria that know the tricks of both sides of the coin. And he is acutely aware, acutely aware that Wiki has an ambition. So he's watching Wiki playing what he, by the time he settles down, he would decapitate Wiki. Wiki will be incapacitated to do anything. And what I'm saying, I will be happy to come back to your station with time when you will see how he will cut Wiki to sizes. Because he knows, he, this Bola Metinibu is somebody that sees far ahead. He sees five, ten years ahead, and he begins to plan way ahead of that. By the time Wiki 
assuming, assuming without conceding, that we don't get the judgment in the Supreme Court, right? And assuming without conceding that Wiki thinks he's settled with Tinubu, Tinubu will put Wiki in his pecking order. Tinubu has a long-term principle of putting people in their pecking order. And Wiki will be irrelevant as far as Tinubu is concerned because there are 1,001 politicians with acumen, with intelligence, with capacity, with the broad acceptance. We can, where will Wiki be accepted in Nigeria, for God's sake? First of all, Wiki will not be accepted in any part of northern Nigeria because Wiki's tension and hatred for the northern Nigeria has been evident and it's so obvious that every day of his life, that anger reverberates in his thinking. Wiki also will never be accepted by the South. He deceived them. He said he was going to support Peter Obi. And if you look at the party, he was instrumental in chasing Peter Obi out of the party. That's Wiki for you. And then he deceived them into saying equity and fairness, if you're talking equity and fairness and justice, which part of Nigeria deserved to produce the presidency in the 2019? The West has had it, the South South has had it, the Northern Nigeria has had it, it could have been the Southeast. But he used Peter Obi and negotiated himself with the FPC so he can be accepted. Come to the South South. How many people are accepting the South right. Even in his state, Mr. Mr. Bala, people don't accept it. Mr. Bala, in the interest of time, you know, um... But it's not just who's going to be, you know, who these statements should be directed to. Now, the PDP as itself also didn't pick the Southeast, you know, um, candidate. So, um, not just yes or no. But I want you to speak on, I, I want you to speak further. We're going to go to the Supreme Court. But I want you to speak further on PDP as a party once again. And I'm sharing with you um, from, you know, another PDP member. And we're talking about Ben Moray Bruce now, who, of course, was in National Assembly uh, before it says on he, he's he tweeted that once elections have been held and the winner is announced we must follow the jonathan doctrine and accept the people's verdict of interest uh, in the interest of democracy and the nation basically almost asking um atiko abubakar to accept you know and not bother going to the supreme court to go in further these are people that you know in the past you know a lot of people expected were the foundation of the pdp but they seem to be throwing the party under the bus and throwing atiko abubakar under the bus is it just Yenson Wiki that we are going to blame here on the G5? Or is the PDP itself, as a whole party, and the people around it, just in total ben chaos? Bruce, ben Bruce is not a foundation member of the PDP. Ben Bruce is not an active politician. Ben Bruce is a technocrat. Even he's a technocrat in politics, right? And Ben Bruce is a businessman. You know, the way businessmen look through the lenses of politics is different from the way politicians look at it. Because he has to guide his business. Now the elections are over. Most of his investments are in the Southwest. So you can understand when he makes certain comments that should be occurring, uh, or a certain comment that massages the ego of the incumbent. Because a lot of people believe that once these things are over, Tinubu is going to come after you. So people also are carving the future for themselves. But when you talk about Jonathan Doctrine, where was the doctrine established? Is it by the code of law or the party domesticated it and call it? It is his opinion, and he has the right. I mean, why, why will you impede on the right of somebody to express itself? But that expression of right cannot resonate with the majority of the members of the party, as it is evidence in the activities of the party. Even Nelson Wiki did not say the party shouldn't go to court. You have to understand the trick he's playing. Going to court to challenge an outcome of election, even if you think you will not win, it's important that you help in preserving democracy by testing that, because if we don't do that, it gets to a point in our democracy where anything can happen and people will go scot free. If there is a legal question, who else will answer? If the path to court is one of the means of avoiding anarchy in the state, were they expecting that uh, Atiku should tell the Nigerian people to go to street, cause promotion, and then turn Nigeria upside down? I think that people should celebrate the fact that when a party is agreed with an outcome of election, it should exercise its right as enshrined by the Constitution. So PDP has taken the part of the Constitution. Ben Bruce is talking about his own opinion. And he has the right to express that opinion. Unfortunately, it does not reflect the opinion of the generality of members of PDP. Okay. Um, let's talk about the Supreme Court now as so we're wrapping up the conversation. What your expectations are for the Supreme Court? Do you have faith that the judgment of the Supreme Court will obtain the decision of the Court of Appeal? <laughs> I don't have an opinion on this matter. <laughs> All right. Um, what are your expectations also? If the Supreme Court doesn't work in the favor of the PDP or any other party, 
Um, is uh, Atiku Abubakar likely to also gear himself up for 2027? Is it too early to, I'm to glad discuss? You, if you had said, if the PDP hasn't got, you know, doesn't get that judgment, are you, if you talk, then I can give you my opinion about myself. You're asking me to give an opinion about somebody who I don't even know what his opinion is in respect of the matter. Atiku is focused on the Supreme Court and he believes that the Supreme Court will write the wrong on the uh, presidential election petitions too. So you get to the bridge and you cross it. But you don't cross before you get there. Otherwise, it could be assumed as fantasy. All right. Uh, Daniel Wala, thank you so much for joining us this morning and for sharing your thoughts with us on the subject matter. We hope to have you. I mean, you've promised to come back when some of your predictions may possibly come to fruition. So we would love to have you again. When, when my predictions come, not me, they will certainly come. <laughs> but I'll be happy to come back. Okay. Fingers crossed. We'll, then. we'll wait and see. Thanks for your time. Thanks for your time.